this is my 2022 Tesla Model Y long range. It should be an absolutely brilliant family car, but it isn't. So let's talk about why I'm wrong. It has got a huge amount of space. And when I say a huge amount of space, I really do mean huge. There is so much room here in the back that you could have an absolute party. You can certainly carry three passengers quite comfortably and the seats are Isofix tethered just under there, which is nice and easy for you to get your child seat into. If you need one of those, there's absolutely bags of space. If I get in, there is an awful lot of both headroom and I'm what, 5'9", and also legroom. There's bags and bags and bags and bags and bags of space. And the boot is even bigger. It has got so much space that you could just carry almost anything that you wanted without really having to think about it. Now, I know some of you might be saying, well, what about this sloping roof line? But actually, the boot is quite deep, which means that you've got an, quite a lot of space underneath this to be able to get large items in. And of course, you've got an underfloor of the boot and you've got a frunk as well. And the front of the car is similarly vast. There is a lot, an awful lot of space. And what's more, you've got this wonderful glass roof, all the better for seeing the bird poo and other things that is currently all over it. And if I close the door, the window line is quite low. So if you have got pukey children, which a lot of kids get a bit pukey, especially when they're traveling and especially if there's not much window back here. So a low window line should make this perfect for kids, but it isn't. Sitting here in the driver's seat, the experience is similarly good. So the steering wheel is nice and fat and sporty. And similarly to in the back, the window line is really low down. So you have got a fantastic view out. You really can see the corners. And as you can see up there, because you've got this nice hump on the edges of the bonnet, you can actually place the corners of the car. It's genuinely good. This car is absolutely brilliant at doing the longest trip. So I live up here, if you haven't been seeing my channel already, I live up here north of Aberdeen in northern Scotland. And I've driven this car past London into the southeast and I've driven it through the Midlands and I've driven it up and down plenty of times. There is absolutely bags and bags and bags of range in the long range battery pack that I've got. I have never once thought I need a bigger battery and I need more range. This car will just go and go and go. So again, if you want a practical EV, this is that practical EV. It's got a load of space. Its interior is lovely to sit in. The windows mean that you've got a fantastic view out. Even if you are wee and you're in the back and you're on a booster seat or a baby seat or whatever, out, you're not likely to get as travel sick because you can see out of the windows. It's got plenty of range. It's got huge amounts of interior space and in the boot and all of the rest of it. So why am I saying that it's not good as a family car. I'm doing it for one reason and one reason alone, and that is ride comfort. Let's talk about this realistically. This car is a cross country weapon. This is the long range dual motor version of the Model Y, which means it's got an electric motor in the back and it's got another one in the front. And it delivers all of the power you could ever need. And it delivers it at any speed when you put your foot down. It goes. And it doesn't just go a bit, it goes a lot. And I'm not going to lie to you, it's properly entertaining. Being able to boot this car and overtake anything without needing to think about it is quite useful to have, especially if, like me, you live out in the countryside and you do get to do some overtaking. This is a chuckable car as well as being rapid going forward it does have uh, excellent grip going through corners i can drive this car and i can hustle it through bends and i know that there's plenty of grip but here is the problem it's heavy and it's 
bulky. And to be able to get that level of mega performance, Tesla have made the ride quite firm. Now, I have said in previous videos that I don't find the ride to be a problem. And it's true. I don't find the ride to be a problem. But I'm not driving around with my kids in the back of the car for most of the time. And even if I was, my kids are a little bit older than the, some of the ones that we've been talking about. Certainly their days of car seats and things like that are long gone. But if you have got kids that age, then the firmness of the ride of this car is going to be a problem. It is just too jiggly and fiddly and riding firmly over bumps so that you can feel them through the chassis. And remember that the way that Tesla build their cars is you've got a structural battery pack. So the battery pack under the floor is part of the chassis and then you've got the giga castings on front and rear um, which house the electric motors and the wheels and everything else bolt onto it. So it's a very stiff chassis naturally. And that just makes it hard riding. Now, if you want a car that you can absolutely hustle, this is the car. Or, better still, get the Model Y Performance, which has got to be ludicrously quick. I know at one point you had Model S Ludicrous Edition. Um, how on earth uh, you need more power than this has got, I don't know, but obviously some of you do because people are buying the performance version. But this is a, already an insanely quick car. So to make this car suitable for families, here's what I'd like to see. Can Tesla please make a family edition of the Tesla Model Y? And here's what I'd like to see on that car. So, okay, it's bulky and it's heavy, but you know what? The Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid that I sold before I got this car, that was also big and bulky and heavy. And that had a supple ride. Okay, it was too soft. You couldn't chuck the thing around bends at all. But it isn't the weight that means that the ride has to be so firm. It's because of this nuclear arms race of power that a lot of EV manufacturers have got. So let's have softer suspension is point number one. Let's have a smaller wheel. So this is on 19-inch uh, wheels. Put it on 18s with more sidewall. More sidewall means more flex, means a better ride. So to do that, you would almost certainly have to neuter some of the performance that you get on a Tesla Model Y long range. And that's absolutely fine because this thing has got preposterous amounts of power. Fun, but preposterous. So, can we please have the single motor rear wheel drive car with that turned down again a little bit? You don't need to go that quick if it's being used as a family wagon, right? So if you turn the motor down, then there's less power, which means there's less need to be able to um, hold all of that together when you're going along, which means you can have softer suspension. And by doing that, you can have smaller wheels. Now, in the comments, there's bound to be some people saying, ah, no, 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 no. You have to have bigger wheels because you've got to carry all of that weight. Well, again, SUVs, my Outlander was on 18 inch wheels. Put the uh, extra load wheels on if you want, but it can be done. So a Model Y family edition, I think is the car that is missing from their lineup because this genuinely is a fabulous machine for transporting your family and all of your stuff long distance. And I do mean long distance. I am already thinking about doing a transcontinental trip in this car next year, 2024. We'll go to Spain from Northern Scotland. Three days, but it's entirely doable. And it'll be comfortable. But if you've got small kids, or if you just like a softer ride, you are going to complain. And I know there's plenty of people who on Tesla forums or on EV forums or whatever else do talk about the ride and say it's too firm. And you know what? From that perspective, it probably is. I think a compromise could be found. So make the performance one have the firmer suspension. And I know the performance has got even firmer than this because it's, an, again, 20-inch wheels with even less sidewall. But give that car 
the matte performance and the hard suspension and then just have a dialed down version for normal people you want a car that's got a bit of poke i've had plenty of cars that have had poke going back to something god awful like my Vauxhall vectra uh, diesel that was a 1.9 liter turbo diesel but it had a pile of torque which meant that you could you know pick it skirt up and charge fairly quickly where you needed to it wasn't ludicrously rapid like this but it was fast so we could have that kind of level of performance which for normal people coming in from normal cars is going to be absolutely fine let me know in the comments what do you think am i completely potty is the idea of a tesla model y family edition just one of these mad things or actually is there something in it because i can just see how you could sell a lot of these things if you actually said okay let's think about who the target market is and how can i put this this is a big car this isn't the model 3 this isn't you know small and agile and svelte this is a big fat mama of a car it's big it's got loads of interior space this should be a family wagon but it's a bit like saying that an audi rs6 is a family wagon because it's the avant well okay yes it's got the space inside it but it's got nuclear powered engine and it's got suspension hard enough to make all the fillings fall out of your teeth and to make your kids cry and this it's not that hard but it's too hard for that kind of use so i would like somebody to tell me why i'm wrong and it can't be done or it shouldn't be done or whatever else let me know in the comments what do you think and i'll see you very soon back here for more adventures in my model y ludicrous edition here on just get a tesla